All right, y'all. It's time to talk about it. NaNoWriMo. If you're here, you probably know what it is. But for those of you who don't, NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month. Most of us in the writing community have heard of it. But for those who haven't, here's a quick rundown. NaNoWriMo started in 1999 with just 21 participants, all who set out to write a novel of 50,000 words in the month of November. Since then, it's grown into a hefty nonprofit and a massive annual event with hundreds of thousands of writers across the world, all aiming to hit that same word count goal of 50,000, the minimum number of words, it's said, to equal one novel. I don't know exactly how it looks in other countries, but in the United States, writers can participate at home, online, or in person with others like them at write-ins hosted in major cities and plenty of minor ones. NaNo has always been about more than just hitting a word count. It's about the challenge, the camaraderie, and building a habit of creativity. Like many people my age, I first heard about it in 2009, the beginning of high school, with the Young Writers Program, a 13-plus spin-off group associated with NaNo aimed at getting younglings to be creative. At that time, I had just moved to Vegas. I was a young writer trying to navigate a big move and a lot of challenges and changes in my life. When I heard about it, it felt like a good opportunity, a chance to dive into a writing community and work on something I'd been trying to actualize since middle school. But life was chaotic, and like many new things we try, I just didn't even make it close to the mark that year. Still, it introduced me to a space where people like me were trying to carve out time to create. Nano came to me during one of the loneliest times in my life. Along with Figment.com, may she rest in peace, I discovered that there were whole communities out there of people who loved writing just as much as I did. It was huge. I kept trying, year after year, with new projects, every time trying to make Nano work for me. In 2014, the same year I attempted Millwordy, I finally won. To win, all you have to do is write 50,000 words in a new project. And I did that. It felt amazing. The following year, in 2015, I really cemented myself into the Vegas Nano community, the Vegas Ramos, as they call themselves, and joined local write-ins and met some amazing people. That sense of community kept me coming back year after year until 2020, the year that will live in infamy for many more reasons than just canceling a few write-ins. The in-person write-ins stopped, and people like me, who are really not prone to using Discord with any sense of regularity, dropped off from the community. And that is what I will call the first NaNoWriMo mass exodus. But for many, the NaNo forums and the regional Discord channels were a lifeline amid the isolation of the pandemic. The MLs, municipal liaisons, and volunteers who managed to keep writers engaged and active were absolute saints for the work that they did in the name of creativity and community. A lot of the best interconnectivity and online community moments of NaNoWriMo history actually occurred between 2020 and 2022. And when NaNo finally sanctioned in-person write-ins again in 2022, the MLs took up the task with tremendous sincerity, despite what was likely a significant amount of burnout in the midst of atrocities and deaths that we had all faced over those two years. In 2023, many of us were disheartened to learn that NaNoWriMo was treating the very people who held the community together with what felt like indifference to some, and to others, like outright hostility. In 2023, there was this big scandal, and I won't go into detail here because it's lengthy and traumatizing, so I'm just going to give you the spark notes. Here they are. Long story short, there were issues with NaNoWriMo's transparency in how the organization handled community concerns regarding well-documented inappropriate adult contact with minors in a NaNoWriMo forum. NaNo had brushed the concerns aside when they were initially brought up, and when the scandal officially came to light thanks to a few activists, the organization ended up playing the victim. Instead of taking responsibility, NaNo made sure that the MLs bore the brunt of the backlash. This led to what I'll call the second NaNoWriMo mass exodus, of which I was a part. This mass exodus increased in severity after certain documents NaNo distributed to MLs in anticipation of future ML participation in 2024 circulated writing circles across the globe. I don't have the documents, and I'm not going to display them here, but they're available online. You can find them on Reddit, I'm sure if you look hard enough. The third NaNoWriMo mass exodus occurred this year, in September of 2024, when NaNo released an entirely tone-deaf statement about the use of AI to write one's novel. They revised their statement twice in response to the community's disapproving reaction, but never definitively said anything other than that to condemn the use of generative AI 
to write a novel is both classist and ableist. And that is what the majority of this video is going to be about because I can safely make a YouTube video about this without having to worry about my video being taken down as a result of discussing really fucked up content. So here we go. Let's unpack why this statement flies in the face of the concept of creativity and the very basis for National Novel Writing Month. Generative AI models like the ever popular and currently floundering ChatGPT are modeled off of the work of people who have not consented to their work being mashed together with the works of other unconsenting creators to develop seemingly original work that a third party can then claim as their own, reproduce, sell, and otherwise distribute. In this sense, AI undermines the spirit of NaNoWriMo, which is meant to encourage personal growth, creative exploration, and community engagement around developing your own original work. When generative AI is doing the work for you, you are not using your own creativity to develop something made entirely by you. Generative AI is not the same as another cognitive being consensually contributing to your work, say as a co-author or an editor. It's a string of equations that are comprised of the actual work of undocumented contributors. And that, my friends, is plagiarism. Not to mention that most AI models marketed toward writers, such as ProWritingAid, which is NaNoWriMo's AI's like, partner company, cost money. What imaginary disabled poor person would have the money to even afford a tool like that? This is all bad enough, but add to it that the environmental implications of these tools are positively grim, and I mean, there really isn't much else to say. Except, actually, there is. Because additionally, and just as importantly, NaNoWriMo's implication that disabled people or poor people are inherently in need of help to complete their work is appalling in its own right, especially when we consider that the measuring stick Nano is presumably using to grade the work of these people uh, that they are using to prop up their shoddy position is the Eurocentric standard of artistic acceptability. I shouldn't have to say these things, but we're here, so I'm gonna say them. First and foremost, economic standing and disability do not directly translate to the value of a person's work, point blank. And secondly, fuck your eccentric standards of artistic acceptability. You have NaNoWriMo to thank for the following diatribe. Eurocentrism and US capitalism feed into each other to create this limiting, pathetic, milquetoast version of art and creativity where things artists create are just toned down into what effectively are vague Xerox copies of each other, removing the unique perspectives and experimental approaches that come from the lives of those who do not live at the intersection of Eurocentric standards of beauty, ability, wealth, and so on. Those people have to actually fight for their voices to be heard, and we as a society need to hear their voices if change is ever meant to occur. Things have obviously gotten easier thanks to the internet, but most voices are still quashed by the racism and classism endemic to the systems that they're supposed to use to make their own voices heard. So I guess what I'm saying is generative AI draws on what's already out there and accessible to it, right? And that means that it's just making more of the same. It's inherently got this Eurocentrist bias because of the content pool it's drawing from. It can't come up with something original. It doesn't have experiences. It's just math equations and electricity in a big box off the coast of some lake where all the fish are dying. And that's not to say that math and electricity can't be creative, I guess, but shit, y'all, like, this ain't it. We're not there yet. This isn't Star Trek replicators. This isn't the AI that you dreamed of when you were a kid or read about in science fiction. The systems around it are still broken, and the thing is not a soul in a metal body. It's an algorithm, just like almost everything else that comes at you from that little rectangle in your hand or buzzing in your pocket. All that said, NaNoWriMo must have used AI to generate its response to the community's backlash because it wasn't even vaguely nuanced or self-aware enough to even address any of those concerns. The organization spinelessly and vaguely doubled down on its stance, I guess, defending generative AI and alienating the community it's supposed to support. And that has led to even more people saying, I'm out of here. So I hope that clears things up. For all of these reasons, I cannot participate in NaNoWriMo going forward, and that is unbelievably sad. NaNo gave me a sense of belonging, and it was the last bastion of writing communities from that era of my life. I was hoping that it would bounce back from its issues <laughs> from last year, but it's just gotten worse. So NaNo helped me connect with other writers here in my new home, 
and it's helped me build lasting habits in relation to how I approach my writing process. But it's not comfortable or accepting responsibility for its actions or statements. And that, honestly, is the bare minimum that this organization owes its community. It might seem like I'm ending the video on a grim note, but there is hope springing from all of this. And that is that the MLs, who spent hundreds of hours keeping Nano afloat, have started breaking off and making their own local writing support groups. Chances are, your region has one. And if it doesn't, maybe that's the universe telling you it's time to pick up the baton and make a safe space for others like you. People who are looking for a community to help them face the ever-daunting blank page. I know I did. That's why I have rebirthed this channel into a spot for reliable weekly virtual write-ins, why I developed the Lettercast Writing Club Discord server, why I'm developing courses on formatting and publishing your own work, and why I'm trying to cultivate a creative community in my day-to-day -day life. Whoever you are watching this, I hope you find the creativity and community that Nano used to give you. I hope you're inspired to keep writing, keep creating, and keep your community strong. No matter what happens, one thing Nano always got right was its core idea, saying, motto, the world needs your story. Hey there, thanks for watching today's video. In case you haven't heard, I recently released a set of new and old short stories through Storydown Publications' annual thriller anthology, Distant Tales. This year's publication is titled Distant Tales, Second Chapter, and I would love it if you would check it out. I did the editing and formatting on this thing, and I'm super proud of how it turned out. And of course, it has some amazing stories that will definitely get your blood pumping for the holiday season. As a side note, if you're an author who's looking for community, guidance, or publishing services, feel free to check out Story Den Publications. I work with them as an editor and formatter on a regular basis, and the founder, Tai Hakobo, is a close personal friend of mine, and I really believe in what she's trying to do. Her goal is really just to make indie authors' dreams come true at an affordable rate with high-quality services, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, check them out at the link below in the description. Thanks, and have a great day. say that's a wrap.